Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Star Citizen Live, this time featured on the uh, work of the USPU Gameplay Feature Team. I'm your host, Jared Huckabee. Uh, if this is your first Star Citizen Live, welcome. Uh, Star Citizen Live is where we take questions from uh, you guys, the Star Citizen community, and put them directly to our developers over a live stream. Uh, as we are in the new uh, work from home era, uh, we, are, uh, we are going directly into our developers' homes. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our group. We'll go around the, we'll just, we'll just go around the world here. Um, let's start with you, John. Who are you and what do you do for Star Citizen? Man, that's a big question. Uh, in terms of who I am, I'm still, I guess, figuring that out. Uh, I'm a senior UI designer, uh, and I've been doing it for a number of years. Um, and I'm just, you know, basically doing them, tall and star citizen, getting stuff out there, nice, sexy UI to look at and use. Um, I don't know if you want to go into my work history, but uh, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> All right. So, so you, you work on UI elements under the gameplay feature team, under the U.S., PU gameplay. USPU, yeah. Under yeah. this guy down here, Rob, with uh, much more hair than I have. All right. Uh, Spencer, who are you and what do you do for Star Citizen? Hey, uh, I'm Spencer Johnson, and my wit on stream is not as good as John, so my jokes are unprepared. Um, I am a gameplay engineer, so I do various coding things for shopping features, uh, insurance features, character customizer, variety of things under the domain of USPU. Uh, in uh, engineering sense. Gotcha. And, uh, and then uh, last but certainly not least, uh, Rob, uh, tell us who you are and what you do for Star Citizen. I am Rob Reininger. I'm the lead designer, uh, system designer in Austin. I've been the product owner of the US uh, feature team for a while, the USPU feature team. Um, inherited a bunch of features when we kind of merged the US1 and the US2 teams together into the new USPU team. So we're, we cover quite a bit under our umbrella now. It's, uh, it's a pretty daunting amount of work, but yeah, we're trying to keep it all alive and going, really. Uh, latest uh, is the, yeah. Now that said, uh, there are there are still more than one gameplay feature team. So, yes. Uh, like you, 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 you are, you are, you guys, you guys and uh, many other folks that couldn't join us here in the day simply because we're stuck with quads here, uh, yeah. they, uh, represent uh, one team based out of Austin and Los Angeles combined uh, that work on a select grouping of, of gameplay related features for the Precision Universe. But there are other teams in Europe who also serve the same function but work on other features. Yeah, so, yeah. There, there's mission feature team. There's the EU... Um, feature team there's you know uh vehicle features there, there's a lot so i mean we were kind of under our respective pillars and gotcha. so that's that's my way of prefacing that of course uh not every developer involved in star citizen can speak to every single feature and every <laughs> single function that's being worked on for star citizen so we're going to try to keep the questions related uh, specifically to the stuff uh that your team uh has worked on or is even still working on uh at this point um as usual we put a thread up on spectrum where we uh, where we collect questions for those who can't join us here live, and uh, those throughout the week uh, can vote to see which questions they want to be uh, want to have answered most. So we're just going to start uh, with those questions while we wait for some of the questions to come in live. Uh, if you are watching live on Twitch, you can submit questions uh, with the word "question" surrounded by brackets. Uh, that'll help us pull it out. And of course, uh, please remember if your question doesn't get picked or doesn't get asked or whatever, it's only because this isn't the team uh, that can speak to that particular question. So, uh, starting with the thread here, um, it's a quantum travel, th uh, quantum travel question. It says, are we going to get specific quantum travel waypoint marking in the future? Now, I, I'm assuming that means the ability to kind of find something or set your own point and then have that in your history, kind of go back to it. Um, yes is the short answer. Uh, that This is something that we... I, I, I kind of tie this to kind of the, the whole data running, you know, type of experience exploration, being able to kind of sell those off. Um, and so I, I would ex expect this around that feature uh, timeline, but th this is definitely something that we want to be able to do uh, in the near future sometime. Like it's, yeah, it's exploration is being talked about a lot more heavily now. So uh, it is definitely coming. And uh, I, I assume uh, being able to mark waypoints and stuff would, uh, as far there's the development of the feature, but then there's having to implement it in a way that in which backers can 
understand it and it's easy to uh, easy yeah. to, to to use and that usually falls under ui uh, john, john we hear a lot about um UI touches every aspect of, of Star Citizen. And Star um, Citizen is also very UI every, every game as well. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so sometimes, uh, you know, a feature, featured, feature work uh, tends to be, a feature work has to have the relevant UI to go with it. So uh, a lot of times, you, even if the underlying work is complete, uh, finding a way in which to integrate it with all the other systems so that UI doesn't become cluttered and stuff uh, can be a big challenge. Mm -hmm. um, We've had... No, go ahead. Uh, we've had several conversations uh, about this internally, whether or not we're going to uh, execute uh, some sort of m management app in Moby Glass for these things, or if we'll integrate it into a much more robust star map. Um, there's a lot more functionality that the star map could use. We've had a lot of discussions about that and the direction we want to take that in. Um, so if I were looking forward to this feature, I might look forward to it there uh, or in the Moby Glass somewhere. Okay. 100%. Uh, Next question. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, will asteroid belts block our travel such that we have to pass through them out of our out of quantum travel, or will we always be able to warp through solid rock? Uh, I think the answer to that's pretty obvious. I, I'm not going to lie. This is a topic that comes up about every two to three months in our PU update meetings. Uh, it's something Chris is like, yeah. So when are we going to get that? Um, so it, it is definitely going to come. It's a little more complicated than uh, just putting collision on the, every single rock because there's, you know, obviously hundreds and thousands of them in asteroid belts. And, and that's you don't want to slow down the game just for the sake of one asteroid belt. But, um, yeah, it, it is in the plans. I'm not sure what tech team is actually going to be doing that, if that's going to be like someone like Marco's team, the procedural team, or if that's. Uh, that's on like the quantum travel team. I'm not sure. I'm sure we'll be involved uh, at some point, just with our quantum travel work. But uh, yeah, that that's definitely going to require a bit of tech that we don't have at the moment. Okay. Uh, next question is about service beacons. Uh, since some of us use service beacons to pay friends, will we ever see a better option to directly pay another player? As in maybe I'm a pirate holding them up for a fee or an option to send list a beacon privately to people on your friends list. Funny you bring that up. We are literally working uh, this quarter on a, a player trading app, uh, which I'm so excited about because it's the beginning of being able to trade items and things like that. However, it will be limited to money to start. Uh, but that's that. Yeah, I, I don't know if people are aware, but we've kind of focused on the, this friends and social aspect of our game again this quarter, uh, kind of trying to bring that back up to speed here. And um, in my opinion, like player trading is is a huge part of that, right? It's just the social interaction of, hey, I got this, I'll give it to you for this. And, uh, you know, so with our physical inventory, it's gonna, it's definitely gonna come with some restrictions as far as like item trading, um, you know, maybe being in the same place as somebody else. Um, you know, you'll be able to essentially wire money to somebody anywhere in the, in the universe though. Uh, so you could just send a gift to your buddy and they don't have to be on the same server. It's just, it's gonna be friends list driven. So if you have them in your contacts, shoot them a, shoot them a payment and there you go. And uh, we'll almost certainly be hearing more about the player training app as it's developed further on uh, ISC this quarter. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for that as work continues. Um, Spencer, what are you working on right now? Right now is a slurry of <laughs> a thousand different bugs as we prepare to get 3.9 uh, out the door. Um, I, which one of the most recent ones was that uh, quick buy bug but I don't know if I want if we want to talk about the now or if we want to wait for the ISC feature. Yeah. Yeah. They don't right. spoil the feature. <laughs> oh, I didn't say anything. Don't don't ask me questions. Um, Things are coming. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's sort of what you'll see at the start of every quarter is the you know, the spillover of like these are really important issues before we go live. And they're always all over the place. And they always sort of pop up from like when new features go in and new pieces of tech come in, old things start to break. So even though our team hasn't personally done work on the uh, character customizer feature, any feature work on that in, in months, um, there's a bug right now where um, selecting your gender isn't persisting into the PU. Uh, since we have a microservice architecture with a lot of new services coming online all the time, sometimes you see problems there. And so I'm just all over the place right now on bugs. Um, 
that and the uh, the new shopping features we've added are are also spitting up a lot of bugs. All right. Um, how will cargo decks differ from normal commodity screens? Uh, cargo decks are more of a location as opposed to uh, a replacement for commodity trading. Um, think so. Originally, and we're still moving forward with this vision, uh, we had the idea of a cargo depot. And that's that's kind of like the cargo network that supplies a planetary uh, area, right, and all its moons. Um, all of the external externally shipped cargo would go through these major cargo depots. Um, but we also wanted people to be able to... Um, store cargo, uh, and this is kind of where it gets into the player's trading app. We would, you know, if you have a large bit of cargo, large items, things like that, that you'd want to trade to somebody else, you'd have to go to a cargo deck in your location, store it there, the trade ownership to the other person, the other person can come uh, pick it up from that location, right? And it's to kind of prevent people from, uh, like, like money, instantly shipping, you know, billions of dollars of uh, goods that don't have to go through pirate space, right? It's uh, to keep that kind of physical nature of the world that CR always wants to try and uh, preserve with the gameplay. Um, so it, it's a location. It's going to have, um, like cargo depots may have uh, the the guild manager, the, the, the trading guild dude there that you can go and get special missions for, uh, get membership into the trading guild, um, things like that. You'll be able to rent storage space. Uh, it'll also have, you know, like uh, cargo ships that you can rent. Uh, if you don't have one, you can uh, rent one for a bit through these places. So it's it's kind of a, a location that we're trying to put into stations. So it would just be a deck that's somewhere in the station that you can take an elevator to and uh, go in and start dealing with the stuff there. So, um, and I would expect these things to kind of get inserted into like starports or uh, things like that too. We haven't really discussed exactly where they're going to go in the the major landing zones yet, but yeah. certainly needs to be a part of it. Yeah, uh, the, those are the cargo uh, modules are still under development. We saw yes. first clips of them in the, in uh, the sprint report uh, last quarter, and again, another plug for ISC this quarter. You'll see more about them coming up. Um, does anybody on the team work on VoIP or FOIP? A VoIP, VoIP or FOIP? Uh, I mean, I, I, I do. Uh, that, that's mostly uh, one of our other programmers, Ken, on. Uh, John's obviously done some work on the, the UI in game. Um, and one of our other UI team members that's not with us, Mal Kim. Um, so, yeah, that's a, yeah, why, why do you ask, Jaren? Why? Uh, the question is simply, <laughs> do you have any, uh, are, are there any, are there been any updates recently on VoIP or VoIP that you can share? Uh, VoIP, VoIP is probably coming back around in the near future um we, there are there are some issues that have surfaced um i think mostly because of either uh, some core audio changes or um you know the the sock stuff that went in last quarter um that we're trying to fix right now before 3.9 goes out uh so we were actually literally doing play tests and investigating some bugs that uh we're compiling uh as of yesterday and we talked about it today um so it is the intention that yeah we want to we, we want people to stay in the game and instead of going to Discord or Slack or, or one of these other things we want our social services to be uh, as stable as possible so that you, you have no need to go anywhere else right uh, it's part of the purpose for redoing the friend system this quarter right? it's it's to kind of set us up uh, to to move forward and and come back to that. Uh, yeah can't say when priorities are kind of shifting around right now so it's it's hard to say exactly when but yeah at some point okay uh you mentioned the friends list that's what the next question is about what improvements if any are coming to the group system uh, after the new unified friends list oh man do i even want to say it yeah my my big thing is to try and push that into the front end i think that's um so one of the goals for the friends uh efforts this quarter was to allow people to see, create parties, um, see who's online, uh, easily add people, connect to people, get that two-way handshake, have a unified friends list so we don't have like platform contacts and spectrum contacts, right? We wanted to bring that all under one umbrella and just make it easy for the players to get into the game uh, as easily as possible, right? Like 
people with their make, friends too. With their friends, yeah, with the people that they want to play with, right? So um, we added stuff to easily just right click, join, contact. You can like shoot off to their server immediately, right? And you can party jump, you know, easier now. There's like if you miss the the boat on the the party jump, you just have a join leader button up at the top of the party window. Like we, we're trying to do everything we can to kind of reinforce that get people playing together who want to be together as as fast as possible and part of that game loop in my opinion is jumping into the into the client and messaging your friend hey buddy i'm online add me to the party you know uh, it really to me kind of completes that loop and and we sh- will have access to all the same chat functionality that we have in game as far as the groups and uh party chats and, and all that stuff so uh, it should be pretty easy to to throw into the front end there. Um, so yeah, that that's that's my my next big one um, is to kind of complete that game loop, and then from there, it's you know, I don't know if I even want to say, it, but uh, I'd <laughs> I'd like people to be able to create orgs in games. You know, like uh, th- those are my future thoughts on this, um, just to to really kind of create the backbone of the the social structure here. So right now, there's things we're doing on the website that I, I feel like it would be great for players to be able to pull that in and manage it in game. So, um, yeah, and you know, it's worth mentioning that these, these front end UI features are finally starting to come in, um, for front stuff because we're part of, we're going through this arduous process of moving that over to building blocks, you know, our new UI tech features so that it's actually possible to do things in a not deprecated system and like, yeah. okay, you know, and so now, that, now that that's rolling online, the features are starting to come. And as more building blocks features come online, you'll see these uh, new UIs uh, improve in terms of functionality uh, as we get uh, as we just get more and more tools. Uh, yeah, to- that, that's been the benefit of the building blocks. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, we have gone through and iterated on that new front end friend stuff so quickly compared to what it would have been done in Flash. Like it, mm-hmm. that would have been a couple quarters of work to to try and get that into Flash. And we we could change the whole design of it right now this afternoon if we wanted to. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's that that easy to kind of bounce stuff around so um it really came together very quickly like we, we got a little bit of a late start this quarter and we still kind of got it in before uh the end of the actual official quarter and mm-hmm. you know it's on pt right now so it's there it is someone in chat just um mentioned if we were trying to use these building block stuff for store purchasing and that flow which is exactly what i'm working on right now um and that's part of a uh long process of converting all of our screens that has just started actually so the prison deposit kiosk is the first shopping kiosk that is using building blocks like totally um and we're going to be iteratively like doing you know a couple every quarter or one or two a quarter like all right now this screen is using it now the screen is using it and getting down the, the process each one's getting a little quicker but that's part of a long sort of a sort of vision of updating our, our shopping experience yeah, and it, it's a company-wide goal as well. I know they're working on stuff with the ships, and uh, Moby Glass is going to get a treatment uh, relatively soon. So uh, those are other teams, of course. But uh, yeah, it's it's a huge initiative for us to kind of convert this over. And once it's there, it's it's setting us up. Even if we may not redesign the experience right away, it sets us up to be able to rapidly iterate it on it in the future. And that's the that's the great part of it as a follow-up from the chat uh they're going to be increases to the friends limit the i limit, uh, the amount of friends so limit. yeah i believe it's gone up to about 800 now which should we ran some tests uh, basically what's happening uh before we go live and and we're kind of trying to message this out as well but um we are merging the platform contacts and the spectrum contacts together before uh right around the time that we go live um and then once that happens we'll You'll you'll have up to 800 slots that you can fill, no. uh, and I, I think nobody even got close to that when we were running the yeah. test group. I do want to add that the 800 is where the current testing is, and of course, as this rolls out wider and as more people get into it, if that number has to come down, it will come down. We still have to maintain performance and all that good stuff. So yep. that's where we're, that's where the current testing is at. Um, what else do we got here? Um, uh, the the rec shop in game has not been updated for a while. Um, I can't test the possible load out of my ship in Arena Commander. Uh, are there any updates to rec you can tell us about? Uh, that should be updated on the PTU right now. I actually went through that myself. Um, that has definitely been checked in. So uh, 
if it's not there, if you find something that you're missing, uh, let us know. Because as far as I know, I've grabbed everything that should be in game uh, that's at least available in a PU. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, does the feature team plan to allow us to sell cargo from stolen ships at black market places? Sure. Yeah, it's it's a matter of ownership, and I don't know. Actually, Spencer, you might be able to speak to mm-hmm. the the ownership transition and where that change actually happens. Yeah, I think. There's a couple of directions that we could take that, and I think there needs to be both design and technical questions um, because there's certainly like some stopgap things you could do. Just like okay, we'll we'll try to check to see like you know what was the last few ships this player was like flying and stuff, and who owns them and etc. But and as I'm sure everyone knows, every time you interact with any screen that involves ships, you only see the list of ships that are in your account that you personally own. And I think the best way forward to get that feature would be adding a uh, a system behind the scenes of tracking like player associated vehicles, which which we have like a little bit already, uh, like Rob, which we I used something a little bit like that for the, the last prison ship feature we just added. Um, basically a way of tracking the last vehicle you flew that we know you own, that we know has yep. a quantum travel that you can yep. use to get around and stuff. Um, and so we want to expand on that and have a way of saying, like, here are all the ships that I am somehow associated with right now and have an interface for, like, your friends to allow you to be like, this person's associated with my ship right now. Like, it's cool if they fly it. And, like, maybe sometime in the future, like, it's cool if they spawn it from any top terminal or they could see it in their cargo list while we're either in the same party or same group or, you know, some some list of features there. Um, so, yeah, I think that would be the first step forward is making this a, a proper player associated with ship system, right? And that yeah, can that's... drive several features, including selling from stolen ships. Because the way you'd be associated is, I have stolen this ship. That's my association. You know? Yeah, ship permissions is something that we've been talking about as part of like that social mm-hmm. structure, right? And maybe at the org or the party level or something, you, know, you can say this person, this person can access it. Um, despawning and spawning, again, is a little bit different. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a little harder problem, I think, to solve. But um, yeah. yeah. And some of the work that's going into the cargo decks is specifically about that, being able to drop uh, cargo off there and then you know, set it for another person and then have the ownership switch from, from you to another player and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. ownership, is a, a, a ownership is, a, is a strange topic that touches a lot of aspects of, of, Star, of Star Citizen. Just, I think it, just in life of, in the PU, it's figuring out who owns every little thing like, uh, you know, in, in the universe. Uh, it's yeah. definitely a conversation that we'll be circling back around to more than once. Uh, when buying items in the game, there is no good way to compare statistics on how one item is better than the other. For instance, a quantum drive of the same tier could be more or less efficient, but it could be quicker on spool or jump. Is there any plan of showing these statistics in game? 100% plan, yes. Want it, wanted it for a long time. Um, this is part of our building blocks conversion is to figure out how we can actually get these things that we've talked about for a while uh, into the UI. Um, it's going to definitely come in waves. Like the, the first thing for me is trying to upgrade this experience of just buying and selling items. Um, I think item stats is is probably one of the, the higher priority topics to address first. Um, just so you can at least see them, and even if you have to flip back and forth, there's no you can't click on two and compare, and you know like that. That's additional functionality, but just getting the stats there is is certainly my higher priority on that list. Uh, and then having a quick, easy way to compare two items or to one on your ship, or uh, maybe even to one that's not even at that location, right? So we we got to figure out how that user flow needs to work uh, a little bit better, I think, before we just jump into that. But um, it, it is extremely important. Uh, we're right now we're baking uh, d- item descriptions and stats into the descriptions of the text, like which is just horrendous. Uh, so yeah, we we want to move away from that as as quickly as possible. Localization guys would love that. Yeah, I, I think everybody would love that. <laughs> um, one of the uh, follow up questions from the live chat about the building blocks. Um, as more of these shopping kiosks and they come online. Uh, the, as they're converted over to the building blocks, um, they're now these interactions are now visible to other players ar- 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 around you. Uh, the question is, uh, will we ever be able to reach out and, and push somebody's button as they're trying to use the, the kiosk? 
The idea is no. Uh, that that's <laughs> extremely trolly, and but we don't the troll wanna... in me, the troll in yeah. me is like, please. <laughs> it sounds so fun. Why not? Until yeah. it happens yeah. over and over, and you can't do anything. Um, yeah. No, yeah, that's so exactly uh, why we had that conversation the other day, Rob. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we we'll, just talked about this. It, it's you know funny the timing on that. Um, yeah, I I don't think that's a good idea personally. Uh, I I think it's what, what relevant to kind of see where they are. Uh, we'll have the we'll Jerry Huckabee control option for sure. Uh, no, it, it we want we want to kind of broadcast the the state what it is. But we, you know, we were talking the conversation that Spencer was referencing was, um, should I be able to see how much money they have or how much you know of a certain thing they're trying to buy or because eventually you know like they're going right. to go get in their ship and maybe fly off and should I follow them? Should I you know loot them and you know it's do we want to give away that much information? And I, I think. Right. There, there needs to be a certain level of privacy there, but we do want to try and at least, you know, oh, they're on the commodity screen and, you know, they just, bang, can purchase complete, right? Like, yeah. we want to kind of show some of that, but not mm -hmm. give And there's also, much. like, there's a little bit of confusion about what information you might, uh, you might display. For example, when things come online in the future of having, like, a, a concept of discounts for, like, oh, this player is going to be paying a better price because, like, oh, they're in, like, the, you know the cassava members bonus program or you know whatever uh, they have a voucher coupon something um, they'll be seeing a different price than what you would be paying so are you going to be seeing the price on the screen that they're paying or the one that you'd be paying um, there's there's a lot of weird questions where it's not you know certain what exactly you would want in that scenario and then yeah the privacy concern like Rob said is, is a big thing I think it's all solved by having Steve Bender create a cover your ATM screen animation mm-hmm <laughs> Yeah, along yeah. with like furtive gr glances over your shoulder. We just get the no <laughs> touch the screen with your nose. Maybe like um, a yeah, privacy that. hologram. There we go, like a privacy hologram bubble. Uh, will we ever get the ability to sell stuff back to shops, components, wow. ammos, etc.? Yes. Uh, you know, when you buy something by mistake and then return it and can sell it back, maybe mm -hmm. even at a lesser value. Yes, that is definitely in the plans as well. Um, it's partially implemented. It, it, yeah, it's actually technically possible now. Um, sort of. I put it in a certain there of. in case it, anyone tries it. So right now, uh, the problem lies with the, the, the way that we set up the shops are very specific to uh, single items. Um, and when I think of the sellback feature, I don't, I don't want to have to go oh, well, I need to take this item and go sell it over here, and this item and go sell it over If it's a weapon, I want to sell it back to the weapon shop. If it's a ship thing, I want to sell it back to the ship shop, right? Um, and we we can't group them by item types right now, so just weapons as a, as a full sale thing. Uh, and that's the kind of functionality that I would wait until we have before we... So we don't have to go through every single shop and... You know, add a bazillion items, and yes, can buy, sell. Like, no, just here's a here's an archetype of a shop, and there you go. This is what you can sell back to them. Um, and yeah, it, it's more the way we kind of looked at it, uh, at least in previous conversations, was that commodities are the the profit profiteering, right? That's it's what you go out and make money with. Items are more of a money sink within a game, and it's it's true of most MMOs, right? The you can go and sell it to another person for a profit. Uh, that that's free enterprise is, is always available there, right? Uh, and that's where the player trading system comes into play. Uh, but as far as selling back to shops, that's that's more notably a, a money sink in, in most games. And I, I think you'll see something very similar to that. Okay. Uh, back to quantum travel for a bit. Uh, will we be able to quantum travel to moons directly instead of first going to the planet? That breaks all the rules of the nav hierarchy that uh, we instituted when we worked on quantum travel last um it's we want to make routing uh, a big part of this uh and and i don't i uh, short answer is is no i i think that that kind of breaks some of our fundamental rules and if we allowed that then we'd have to kind of rethink and re-engineer how quantum travel is set up and especially with routing and how that's supposed to work yeah it's uh uh, when you say nav routing, you mean being able to set up a, a final destination and it goes beep, 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 you know, it, yeah, the, it, it the, plans a route? Yeah, 100%. Um, so if you think of 
our solar system as a hierarchy. There's the star is the root of the hierarchy, and then you've got the planets uh, or things that orbit that star as the next level of the hierarchy, and then things that orbit those other things, you know, as a child of their hierarchy, right? So you have to go and get inside the hierarchy before you can see uh, the the other neighboring uh, members of that that group. So if we allowed you to kind of bypass that uh, and go straight to it, it, it kind of breaks that fundamental concept. Um, so it, it's it's why we put in the nav routing to begin with, right? right. To make that easier. And on the other side of uh, quantum travel, uh, quantum enforcement. Is there ever going to be a way to determine where there is a lot of quantum tra quantum travel traffic to efficiently place a trap, or is it always just going to be sit at a location and uh, hope somebody hope for the best? So that's that to me is uh, where long range scanning comes into play, which is is something that needs to be worked on moving forward. Um, I I certainly would expect that for sure. Uh, it's something that I want as a pirate is I want to set a trap or see where people are going back and forth. And you kind of saw the beginning of that with the Tony Z's uh, Quanta uh, demo that he did at CitizenCon. We're starting to be able to track it where everybody is, where they're going. Um, are they QTing? Are they just sitting still? Uh, so that we can figure out how to uh, present that data to the, to the players, right? Because you're on your local server. So, should you be able to see people on other servers? Eventually, that's going to be one big server mesh, right? And then we're going to try and get as many people playing together as possible. But uh, there, there is some technical limitations as to how that uh, gets done. But that's that's certainly like, yeah, we want to be able to show you heat maps maybe on your star map. And here's, you know, maybe known pirate areas are kind of in this, you know, uh, cloud over here, right? Or uh, between these two locations. Um, so, yeah, I, I would expect something like that at some point. Uh, when when that is 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 probably further down the road though. All right. Uh, somebody asked. I was looking for it here. Um, you've used. You guys have presumably used the new the new friends uh, service and everything. Uh, how are you feeling about it? I am excited. So. <laughs> I'll tell you a little story about a play test we tried to do a couple Ooh, years ago time. and. Man, we got to start there because this has been a um, something that that is, I think, been a bit of a sore spot for, at least for me because I I want to quickly jump in and just go go test something out and get a crew together and go try some try one of the ships and we spent about two hours with ten people in a room who could literally talk to each other and had a hard time getting on the same server at the same time and that that was really frustrating. So for me, we we did a fifty man play test to just kind of put it in comparison we went through the process of friending everybody getting into a 50-man party and we're in the server together uh and that was about 35 minutes and that was the entire process from start to end um that to me was amazing i, I think this is going to start really encouraging the group play uh in our game i think it, it just makes it so easy the fact that i can right click on somebody and guarantee you go to their server assuming it's not full right like these are the kind of ease of use things that I think are, are going to be game changing. Uh, I really hope to see concurrency, you know, kind of start to spike up a bit. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm super excited, and I think this is a massive difference. The difficulties involved in getting together with your friends in game uh, previous to this, I I have to assume turn. I mean, they turn some of my friends off. I mean get them in the game, and then we want to get into a group together in the same session, and the amount of time and effort that that took. Uh, it was very difficult to maintain their interest. So this is uh, the social system, uh, especially the front end one, right when you log into the game. I think it's critical for onboarding new players, keeping existing players happy, allowing them the confidence to suggest the game to their friends and, and be able to have a play session that evening with no problems. So that, that was really the main kind of anecdote we were taking forward when we developed this. And that's, and that's the one that most of our further development on the, on the future... Uh, will include how do we make this easier and fun? Yeah, uh, the, the, a lot. Uh, one of the things that fall under an umbrella we refer to as quality of life, yeah. quite mm -hmm. often, just, just just improving the day to day experience. Um, service beacons. What's the next? What's the next step for service beacons? Uh, we had put in some work on the NPC refueling uh, beacon. Just if you run out of fuel, uh, and and that was important because we want to try and regulate 
some of the the distances that these ships can travel because we're starting to think about that new player experience a lot more and how do we keep people a little closer to maybe their starting planet uh, for a little bit longer, right? Um, and fuel consumption is part of that. But um, so we had a bunch of work that's there that we're going to pick up uh, pretty soon. We had some other priorities come in. Um, getting the screen converted to building blocks. So this whole beacon creation process uh, is all currently in Flash in our mission manager right now. And just being able to get that converted over to building blocks will allow us to more quickly add new types of beacons, filters, uh, all these other things that we wanted to add from the beginning. But it was, you know, it's just such a pain to do things in Flash. So um, replacing that screen uh, with the building blocks is probably our first step and then that kind of unlocks us uh the potential to start adding new ones as we want is a refrain we hear uh, quite often building yeah. blocks unlocks so much and it, it has already unlocked so much other features uh going to 3.9 like the personal uh, inventory uh, yeah. system and the, and the personal interaction system and stuff like that it's a uh, uh building blocks is when we, when we first when we first showed it gosh however many months ago with zane when he was in LA, um, like I, 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 I know it's like it was the hardest thing about doing the thing. I was like, how do I convey how big this actually is for our development? And I, I think we got most of it, but uh, yeah, it's 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 been one of those one of those big milestone things for I know everybody. Mm -hmm. there, there's all the flasher ones like OC, you know, uh, you know OCS and and stuff like that. But but man, what what Building Blocks does for the overall development of everything else. Yeah. It's even more impressive when you consider just how new it is, and we are basically putting it yeah. through its 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 trials now uh, in production, and it is holding up great. Um, and I, I just can't wait. For like uh, further down the line, as we add more of these robust features, we'll be able to do so much more uh, with it. I'm really excited. Yeah, yeah. Style there's sheets still not a complete and, tool set. Yeah, yeah there's still yeah. style sheets, animation, better yeah. animation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. building blocks yeah. itself is still being developed, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, I mean, they, they, it, it took them about a year and a half, maybe, of of just work to to kind of replace this entire UI system from Flash. But now that we're going to use it, like actually seeing it in action, now that we kind of went through this front end process was just mind blowing and it's and it's still in its infancy right we're like hey can we get this feature can we like a bunch of feature requests came out of this so we're gonna i will say <laughs> that it's very interesting to see how quickly uh uh leads like rob have adapted to uh adapt to their expectations in terms of uh, iterative feedback so previously <laughs> when we worked in flash it'd be like hey could you change this thing this week and i'd be like well okay well i guess i could do it and now it's like hey could you change this this afternoon what about tomorrow morning uh okay we have another hour can we change this 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 send me a it's, screenshot in a minute <laughs> yeah yeah but you know it's 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 a different workflow but it's not stressful it's actually really uh, all these changes are like yeah give me 20 minutes half an hour an hour half a day like it's it's been great but it's just amazing how quickly people adapt. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, that's not the first time I've heard some version of that story, John. Uh, not 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 with Rob, but with other people. <laughs> okay. That's hap that's happening all around. Um, let's talk about the character customizer a little bit. Um, this question says. Are we ever going to see seed numbers for the character customizer? Uh, I want to have the same look every time without having to tweak my character uh, after a, after a wipe. Now, I I, sh I should mention that the mm -hmm. goal as uh, as a uh, as a project going forward is to minimize and reduce the number yeah. of wipes. You know, no more wipes every patch. So like that, like that is the ultimate goal is to reduce the the, the sheer number of wipes to 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 none if at all possible. Um, but as far as on the rare occasion when something like that might happen, uh, what do you think with regards to the seed numbers? Spencer, do you want mm -hmm. to take on? Sure. Um, so there's a couple things. Um, for one, it, it is not a challenging problem to, to solve. In fact, for the, the core of what people are probably most concerned about, like the facial structure, because that's uh, so floaty, you know, a continuous amount of changes, it's not easy to, to get the exact result again. That's actually just 48 numbers um, uh, that define that. And so the number of, like, characters you would need to have this seed is, like, I think it's, like, 200 characters, which is, like, not something you could remember, but it's very easy to copy and paste. Um, yeah. And I would actually personally really like to see that feature added of it being able to like copy and paste this and insert that seed, not um, 
like Jared said, not because, you know, we want to get back to where we were after wipes because we're trying to get rid of wipes going forward. Yeah. But I think it'd be really cool to be able to share this with your friends. Be like, yo, I just made John Cena. Like, <laughs> everybody. Um, Look, there, I can't even is, see him. Yeah, right. Just no <laughs> there, character there. There is a design risk of like, do we really want everybody running around the universe looking like John Cena? You know, the exact yeah. same face, copy and pasted a million times. So <laughs> I think some, it's, yeah. Now, if somebody's done the creator wrestlers on several WWE games. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, 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 I can, I can speak to the danger of exposing that information. Yeah. So yeah. I think it'd be fun and really great. And at least that aspect of the DNA changes, not super complicated. We'd, we'd need to do a bit more for remembering and serializing your gender and hair and skin color, eye color, all those things. Uh, if, but I, I think it's really more on design if we want to schedule the time to do this. If I recall, we just we had this we had a conversation that included uh, the ability to share your character structure and design with other other players. I mean, we hadn't even been discussing it in terms of wipes. We had been discussing it more if like your organization wants to set up a clone army or something. Like, mm-hmm. how do you how do you do that most effectively? Where two players want to play as twins. Yeah, or like or that. whatever, or a family like a family owned freighter or whatever. Mom, dad, kids, that kind of thing. Um, we just yeah, thought it yeah. would be really useful. I, I think there's several ways we could do that. It's it's not in our current plans right now. I, I think it's it's just a because character customizer was kind of you know we, we put a pin in that uh, back in Q3 last year for the moment, right? It's not it's not done by any means, but uh, it's yeah. Uh, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Maybe we can like do a store seed number and that can get saved out to our long term persistence you know variable somewhere and. Maybe we can restore it or, you know, so that's, I think there's options there, right? Like, do you want to have to copy and paste a 200 digit number? And what does a UI for that look like? Right. Like, uh, you know, mm-hmm. so it, it's maybe there's some more graceful ways we can do that. But yeah, I, I, I just, I think it's more important to focus on the long term persistence side of it. Right. Like that, that to right. me is what, it's what they're really talking about. Right. Yeah. So it's how do we ensure that this is, you know, going into a, a service somewhere that doesn't get wiped as often. Uh, if at all, right? Because there's some things that we definitely don't need to wipe unless data changes out from underneath it, and it's just not possible to to put it back. And that's that's usually the cases where you know we end up getting into a situation where oh, we got to wipe the DB again, right? Like, but um, hopefully we're we're figuring out how to avoid that, you know, as we go to this long term stuff. Uh, <laughs> Here's one that comes Uh-oh. up every once in a while. Uh, will you will you return manual quantum travel uh, without forcing us to use beacons? How are we supposed to explore, Rob? I so I can give you a scenario where you can go and explore that doesn't require that. Like imagine a day where you can scan at a long range, find anomalies, how far you can go. You know, searching for these anomalies deep into space. Uh, with, would depend on your current scanning gear, right? You can find things, those create markers that you can go to. And as you go out in the universe, we're, we're procedurally generating derelicts, asteroids, content, maybe a pirate base or, you know, maybe some uh, nebula mining areas or, you know, it's like, um, I, I don't think it, it's necessarily required. I, I do like the concept of it though and, and have for a long time because I want to point towards something and then kind of go, right? Just go check out what's over there. Uh, so I do think there's merit for it. Um, that's a, that's a conversation. We are, we are circling back to quantum travel, uh, in the near future. I was actually supposed to go out to the UK to discuss, uh, how we kind of change this and, and make it some better quality of life experience and, you know, more interesting for our longer term or longer distance travel, uh, experiences, um, in may, but that's not going to happen now. Um, so I'm at home instead, and uh, we'll kind of prioritize some other features instead uh, until we can kind of have those conversations. But uh, it's certainly a topic I'm going to bring up um, moving forward. Yep. Um, not, not so much a question, but a, a suggestion, I guess. Uh, what are your thoughts about there being an in-game issue council uh, report to happen like the Glass? Hmm. So to maybe streamline some bug reporting is, is, is that, if we were to consider something like that, would that be something that would fall under your purview? Uh, could I? I don't know. That's uh, a somewhat of a new topic. Yeah. Um, That's a cool idea, though. 
Uh, yeah, it, it's hard because it, we always want everything that's in game to be diegetic and of the universe, and an in game yeah. issue council would distinctly be out of game. I guess it would take you out of the yeah, universe that, I, that you're playing, and I guess it, it, it's something. It's something to think about. It, it's I would really like not. to see that because you could directly, like, easily send client information to yeah. a track. Like, it just yeah. spits out the log right to our servers, and yeah. Yeah, there, there's would be definitely a, cool a lot of benefit to that. Um, it's stuff that I know that they're like uh, uh, Turbulent and Benoit's team, you know, with the, the hex tooling that they're doing um, is going to incorporate a lot of these uh, like customer service tools. And uh, I'm not sure what the issue council support is going to be on that. But uh, once they get set up there, I think it's it's certainly much more reasonable to just integrate to uh, that end of the game to, and, and send your logging and messaging out to the same tooling that they see on the website there. So it's it's doable. Uh, that's a little outside of the USPU team's uh, realm. Um, but, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, the next question, uh, this isn't a question for your team, but I'm going to answer it here. Uh, the question is, when will the ship stats on the webpage uh, be correct? Uh, I'm going to say that actually I was just uh, talking with the community team, uh, which is Tyler, Ulf, Molly, and all them. I was just talking to them uh, earlier today about that very topic, which is why I'm going to touch on it right now. Um, and they're working on a plan right now. The issue with that has always been about finding a systemic system that can be sustainable. Because as with all the ships that we have and with all of the micro changes, trying to do them by hand just isn't a vi isn't a viable thing so yeah. we're, we're we're working on getting the the right hooks uh, that are necessary to, to to try to find a systemic solution uh nothing to report specifically just that know that this is a this is a concern that we share that the community team shares with you and they're actively uh pursuing it uh again with no timetable as as always just uh it's in our hearts as well as yours I, I can speak to that just because <laughs> on the side, we've had to write our own tools. I, Jake Mealy has written some tools to strip out the relevant data because we're, you know, we've got the objective pricing, right? So uh, it's it's definitely not a, a small task to kind of be all inclusive for every stat that the ship has. Like some of these things are amalgamations of another stat, you know, that consists of X, Y, and Z that all comes together into a single thing that it, it detects heat is a great representation of that right okay. heat generation is three or four different you know values that are getting calculated into the total heat so there, there's a lot of stuff like that um that yeah it's just figuring out how to best strip that out um can we group with the new friends uh with the new unified friends system uh can we group together before going into a server yeah, I mean that's the whole point of the the. So, if you haven't used it yet, uh, basically what happens is, and and we start these new windows open. So there's there's um, I guess this said, there's a contacts window and a notifications window, and there's buttons to open and close them. But what happens is, as you add new friends through the contacts window, it'll pop up an add window screen. Uh, you can start typing a name, uh, which currently has to start. There's two names that you show up in there. There's your nickname and then like your handle. Um, you can type either one of them, uh, but it does need to be from the beginning of that name. Once you get them in your contacts list, you just right click add to party. When they accept the party invite, you'll see a party window pop up. So your group, your party is now there for you on display. Uh, you can see who the party leader is. You can transfer party leadership. Um, you can still do party launches, as I mentioned earlier. So the, again, this whole effort was to just make this easy and understandable for somebody who uh, is just trying to get into the game quickly. Am I grouped with them? Yes or no? Cool. If they're in your party, they're a different color in your contacts list. So as you're scrolling through up to maybe 800 names, right? Uh, do I want to add this guy? Did, did I add this guy already? You know, like one thing we ran into in the 50 man play test was, oh crap, who's in, who's in the party? And so you like going back in the party and that's when we're like, oh, we got to color code these. So we, we can easily tell who's in your party and who's not. Um, Presence is another thing, right? So you kind of see if they're in menus or if they're just uh, online, which means they're only on Spectrum, uh, or if they're in the game somewhere, uh, you know, PU or game modes. Like it's again, make it easy. Who can I invite? Who's quickly available? Uh, get them in and go. So TLDR, yes. <laughs> um, let's see. 
we're we're just about at time to wrap up here. Um, what's been uh, one of the questions uh, from the thread there was, uh, what's been your favorite feature to work on and develop so far? I guess we'll just we'll just go around the group there. John, let's, oh, let's start with John. Uh, certainly the friends. Uh, system, the social system, and I'm excited about the work that we're, we're going to be doing on that in the future as well. Uh, like I said, like my anecdote before, it wasn't a lie. Uh, I've got friends that I want to get in here and playing with me, but I've been a little, a little hesitant because the the onboarding uh, experience hasn't been particularly good, and now I think it's particularly good. So. I'm looking forward to getting some of the, some of those people in, and looking at the amazing work that everybody else has been doing uh, in the game, uh, and that's really what uh, our job is to make all that stuff much more accessible and visible uh, to the users. So that's my favorite one so far. Spencer? You can't pick his favorite, Spencer. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It's unfair advantage of going first. Um, yeah. So actually. My answer is due a little less from the feature and more to the process. Uh, I would say the character customizer is probably my favorite one to work on, specifically like character customizer experience, because um, I was not the one who implemented like the actual face morphing, but rather the whole front end experience of it. It's definitely um, the funniest to work on too. Yeah, right. Like making that random button was pretty fun, especially before we had symmetrical like uh, yeah symmetrical faces. Uh, yeah. Um, so that was a ton of fun just for playing with, but the process of making that was the most enjoyable too, because the core of that work was done between myself, John, and one of our other designers, Calix, um, with you know lots of ancillary parts and helpers and such. And this is actually before we were under the purview of USPU yeah. for most of that development, you know, like Q2, Q3 last year. But that was most enjoyable for me because we were actually able to iterate on it multiple quarters. I'm sure if you guys remember, there was. A, Technically, there's been three live versions of the customizer, but right. and and I did work on all three of them. But ignoring the first one for now, so we redid it with DNA initially in Q. Did that go live in Q1 of last year? We had like those like radial sliders and stuff. We don't do when questions, even when they're in the past. <laughs> can't 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 can't, yeah. can't, can't track because them. I certainly can't, can't track do them. them. Yeah, I certainly can't do it. So. Uh, we did that, but we weren't super happy with it, so we spent more time to reiterate on it, and we had a really close-knit team of only a couple developers, and like personally, like I could iterate, yeah, John, I could, I could iterate with John and Calix, and even though I'm a programmer, I like to pre pretend I'm a designer sometimes, and be like, well, guys, what if we did it like this? Let's like, reorganize a little, and that was when the job was the most fun for me. Small team doing lots of iterations to make the best experience. And obviously, you know, we have the, the benefits of this being a very isolated feature that's separate from the, the sheer yeah. cluster uh, yeah, yeah. Of, of PU features. But the process itself is what made that one so enjoyable to work on. Right. The, the character customizer almost got to cheat in a way because it's it was completely separated from everything else where everybody else has to develop their feature and then integrate it with everything else, which is where bugs often come from. The character mm -hmm. customizer got to got to exist in its own little world before, you know, folks mm -hmm. even loaded into the game. So you guys, you guys kind of cheated there. Uh, you, you'd think that, but now we're reliant on so many microservices that the game breaks all the time and I get bugs. I'm like, it's, uh, it was the loadout service. Uh, it was the variable service. Uh, we don't do those. And Rob, uh, how about you? Oh, man. I've, I've been here for too long and worked on too many things. Um, I see it's been six years. It's crazy. Uh, you've, been here long, you've been here longer than I have. Clearly, the stuff that you worked on with Spencer and I. I mean, that's. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm not going to lie. You got a lot better with me, Yeah, the, I mean. There's something to be said about, you know, to, I, I've had the most fun working on projects that have, uh, again, kind of been an isolated thing that the team doesn't have to go to a bunch of external teams to get support from. Um, it just the the iteration time, the the turnaround speed that we can do things is much better. Um, I, I had fun working on the quantum travel stuff. I had fun, um, you know, trying to figure out the the mission givers. Like talking with Tony on the the economy stuff has has been a blast. Um, I've kind of my roles kind of changed and morphed uh, over over time. Uh, much more. Um, uh, trying to work with Tony on on future type schedules and and plans and trying to keep these guys you know moving on a day to day basis more so than making things uh, as much nowadays. Um, 
which in it, in and of itself has is, is been kind of fun. I've, I've always enjoyed the games industry because it's always something new and different, you know, every project. So it's, um, yeah, I'd, I'd say those things. I, I'm really happy with the friend stuff. I, I've wanted to work on the social system for a while. Um, I look forward to what we're going to do with, with that. And just uh, I look forward to seeing how that's af- going to affect the game and just the numbers that we're seeing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so that's I, yeah, I, I think anything that I've worked on where I've gotten to actually see a tangible, you know, results or comments and, and thanks from the, the fans has been just a joy because that, that's why I do it, right? Like I make games because I want other people to experience things and have fun. And uh, so, you know, to, to see the fans on Reddit or, you know, somewhere else on Spectrum or whatever kind of react well to something that we did was, was cool. Yeah, One so. of the best parts of working with Rob actually is when he whips out Photoshop to give feedback. It's it's amazing. <laughs> no, it's really, my doodles. It's really, my doodles. the next that was MS Paint. <laughs> the next SCL needs to be just him in Photoshop. Uh, I will um, actually pay money for a ticket. To oh, me. I will say it's, I've been I've been amused by uh, Rob's uh, promotion emails. When a member of his team <laughs> gets promoted, yeah, uh, here's a little inside baseball. Uh, yeah. uh, game development. When when um when when a, any member on a team is 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 promoted to a new position, uh, the 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 leader of that team will send out an email to the company and you know say congratulations to this person and then talk a little bit about why that, that why they got the promotion and and, and their stuff. Uh, Rob tends to uh, uh, the be- the best I can I can uh, I can align it to is like 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 an old Jewish mother who's very proud of her booby. Uh, and, and 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 he, yeah. uh, he it, it's often accompanied by some some remarkable photoshops. Yeah, it warms his heart. Honestly, I haven't photoshopped any of those. Those are all just pictures that I get. So I try yeah. and could, uh, like I, I ask friends of okay. friends, right? Hey, send me some pictures, and you got any good ones? And everybody's always got those few late night ones, or the you know the out in public doing something mm-hmm. silly pictures and. So I, I've done, you know, the the deep thoughts by Jack Handy. I did that with somebody who was quite a character, and he was just like, mm, like all these different poses, like, mm, you know, sitting on nothing in a train, you know, in Germany, right? Like, oh, I wish I had a chair, you know, like it's, it's stuff like that. But uh, sitting is nice, but chairs are better. Um, oh. yeah. So well, yeah, have fun. You gotta have fun with it. It's a big deal for them. So it's, it's always it's always a blast. Well, that about wraps up today's show. Um, for those of you who were watching live, uh, again, uh, if we didn't get to pick your question or address your question, uh, it's simply because this isn't the team uh, that's de- that's dedicated to working on that feature. We saw a lot of great questions about a lot of features that just aren't here for this team here. Um, I will say uh, the most prevalent question was, uh, 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 where's 3.9 or Gib 3.9? Uh, you might have seen me during the show. I was just I'm sh- sh- like, hey, can I get an update on this while I'm here? Because obviously I'm not checking emails and conversations while I'm here during the show. Um, the latest word that I can give you, and I'm going to read this verbatim here so I, so I don't mess it up. Uh, 3.9 is very, very close. There's a decent chance we open wide this weekend. But of course, it's, it's obviously if we could commit to that, we would have committed to it yesterday, the day before, the day before. Um, stay tuned to more information, but we're very hopeful that this weekend is when 3.9 will go live to, to the wider PTU. So hopefully we'll all have something more to do th- this weekend than uh, watch Netflix, which is what I've been doing. Crying I'm crying crossing. I, I've That's been crying so in the awesome. bathtub just like from morning oh, to... Oh, you too? Yeah, just rocking back and forth. That's not necessary. It'll be a nice... <laughs> Awkward. All right. Yeah. So, cool. uh, so uh, that's John. That was Spencer. That's Rob. Uh, I'm Jared. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, next week, uh, we should be back with another episode of Calling All Devs uh, instead of our week live stream. So stay tuned for that. Um, yeah. Take care, everybody. Uh, keep an eye on Spectrum. Uh, that's where any actual any announcements about about uh, three point nine uh, will actually be patch notes stuff like that. And um, yeah, if you if you see uh, any of your Evocati members, any of our Evocati members, our Evocati friends, uh, be sure to uh, give them a, a salute. They've been putting in a lot of hard hours uh, trying to track down these uh, these desync bugs and everything for us. Uh, so um, 
Yeah, everybody's everybody's working hard on both sides to try to get this out of everybody's hands. So thank you guys. Until next time. Thank, thank you. you so much. Appreciate it, guys. See you. All. See you.